you, man! Fuck you, man! You know how much you cost me? You know how much you cost me? I got other bills, you know! You're expensive, man! You're expensive! What the hell are you doing? You couldn't wait 30 seconds for me to get a bottle opener? Hey, that's a twist off! Shit! Hello and welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. But before we get started, what are we drinking? Today we're drinking a very carbonated version of Chucky's Check Pills That Kills. <laughs> Today we're going to bring to you 1979's The Driller Killer. Driller Killer is written and directed by Abel Ferreira, and he's done a lot of really gritty movies. He's like the king of grit. <laughs> yeah. He did Miss 45, basically right after this movie. He also did The Bad Lieutenant. Mm. If you want to see Harvey Keitel go off the fucking rails, then watch Bad Lieutenant. See his wang, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And he also did another great, very underrated movie called The Funeral, which we parodied last year for our Maniac Cop episode. And a lot of people had probably no clue what we were parodying, because <laughs> it's such a weird reference. There's the answer for you. Driller Killer starts off with uh, Reno and his girlfriend and they show up to this church and there's a nun. There's this guy over there that's been asking to see you. And so he kind of slowly goes up to the front of the church where there's this guy sitting there in the front of the pews, touches his hand and he, he just freaks out. And he, Reno just takes off. And the nun is like, I don't understand. He, he had your name and your number. His girlfriend is like, who was that? And he's like, no one. It was no one. Some, some bum. bum. <laughs> some degenerate. Some lowlife bum. We learn that Reno is a painter. He's an artist. And uh, he's trying to get by by selling his works. He's in the middle of painting this huge bison. And there's all this weird shit all around him and everything. And Reno's got a bit of a threes company thing going on here. Like Jack Tripper. Uh, he's living with his girlfriend and her friend. They're the low rent threes company. <laughs> yeah. Come in drilling my head. <laughs> and they got bills coming in too. Look at this bill, man. Who's making all these phone calls, man? The phone called Queens? On top of that, the rent is going up which they're behind on too, by the way. So his girlfriend's on his case to finish his damn bison so he can get paid for the painting. <laughs> That's right. He sees this man on the street get attacked. Nobody stops to help. Everybody just kind of looks around and stares at what's going on. He starts to notice that there's a lot of homeless people sitting around drinking and kind of doing a whole lot of nothing. Just right? wasting there's, away. There's also this fucking loud, obnoxious fucking punk band. Landlord lets them in. They just never stop fucking playing. Like, there's this scene, too, where he's all painting that bison thing, and they keep going. They're still playing. He's like, two in the morning, guys. <laughs> playing the most obnoxious fucking music you can think of. And the same shit on repeat. Same yeah. song over and over. So while this band is getting to him, Reno starts getting these visions of him freaking out with a drill and like blood splattering in his face and everything. Reno goes down to his landlord to complain about this fucking punk band is driving him nuts. What are you gonna do about it, man? <laughs> you, you, they're playing all day and all night. All you do is sit around here and fix plugs. <laughs> <laughs> While well, you're behind on your rent, by the way, he takes kind of pity on Reno and gives him a meal. <laughs> a skinned rabbit <laughs> takes it home, but he starts like destroying it and smashing it all up and you can tell he's starting to lose it a little bit. I'm sitting watching TV and he keeps seeing this commercial for the Porto Pack. <laughs> Some sort of belt pack you can run like drills and stuff like that off. Yeah, it's like a battery yeah. pack. Walks by this hardware store and sees in the window portal pack. And <laughs> so one night Reno puts on this belt pack, grabs his drill, and just goes out and starts killing these bums. Goes to the bus shack, right through the bus shack. <laughs> Next day his girlfriend's reading the news and the headlines of homeless people killed with some sort of power tool. Yeah. <laughs> 
So his girlfriend tells him, okay, the bison is done. Let's try to sell this thing so we can make rent. And he doesn't think it's done yet. Yeah. <laughs> like, listen, you bitch. All you do is sleep and eat <laughs> and bitch. Bitch. And sleep. <laughs> But finally he decides his bison is done. The guy comes over, is all hoity-toity. And... Yeah, yeah. Hmm. I don't know, Reno. It's not like your other work. You're losing it. You're losing <laughs> it doesn't have much to say. In fact, it's it's garbage. Yeah, it starts piece of shit. <laughs> starts getting on Reno's case about how bad this painting is. And his girlfriend fucking loses. She flips out on this art guy. Yeah. Follows him out of the apartment screaming at him. Reno's like devastated. She leaves him and then goes and shacks up with some rich guy, some yeah. other guy. <laughs> so at this point, Reno, he's devastated. He can't make rent. His girlfriend left him. The band's still driving him nuts. And he still has the porto pack. <laughs> And that's where we're going to leave off Driller Killer. So if you haven't seen the movie, finish the movie to see what happens with Reno and his portal pack. <laughs> so one of the first things to mention about Driller Killer is that it's an independent film with actually a lot of unknown actors. Which actually kind of makes it feel a lot more... Realistic. Uh, realistic and yeah. yeah, you can relate to it a lot yeah, more, right? Like, these aren't people I've seen in other things. They that are all like, rich and yeah, shit. They just seem like normal people because mm -hmm. you don't recognize any of them. The movie was shot on 16 millimeter. It helps that look of the movie, that yeah. kind of gritty, low budget look. It was also one of the first movies to actually kick off the whole video nasty shit in the UK. Look at movies that were they thought were either too gory, too sexual. In this case, it was the cover of the movie that got it pulled. So yeah. they'd either censor the movie or completely pull it out of rotation. Yeah. Yank it out of all the video stores and you couldn't buy them or anything. So whenever yeah. you hear someone talking about a pre-cert movie, pre-cert VHS, that is the movie before it was censored or pulled. It's actually not that nasty. <laughs> yeah. It's really not that gory, really. Like there's some scenes with blood, but it's not horrible. It's actually, I'd say less of a slasher mm -hmm. and more of like a black comedy with a lot of social commentary. Yeah. Like this movie has a lot to say about, I even think the times we still live in. Socioeconomic, struggling to make a dime. The bills keep going up. Yeah. Right? There's no help in sight for them. There's bums out on the street. They're getting no help. And they see that and they're like, I'm so close to yeah. being that guy. The weight on their shoulders just becomes heavier and heavier until like Reno, you just snap and start killing bums. <laughs> yeah. Which is an interesting thing and it's kind of debatable in this movie about why he's killing, mm -hmm. at least at first, strictly bums. My idea was that it's putting them out of their misery. And he kind of sees himself going in that direction and he hates it so much where he starts killing these bums. Another sort of facet to that could be simply that he figures nobody's gonna miss him. It also has something to do with the very first scene in this movie too, where he meets that bum in the church. And apparently that's supposed to be his dad, although it's not explained at all in the movie. But you can kind of see the parallel there. Yeah. Because if his dad is like a bum, then he has that preconceived notion already that, yeah. well, bums are sort of bad, they're yeah. garbage, yeah. right? If he, if he hates his dad, then he hates all homeless people. Yeah, yeah. And... A neat movie in that way where you have to kind of go back and rewatch that first scene and be like, okay, now kind of might make sense why he's killing the bums. But they're not super clear as to who that man is. We're kind of grasping. You mentioned that it's a black comedy, which is, <laughs> that's what this is, is a black comedy, right? There's tons of comedy peppered throughout the movie, getting him to hang something on a door. And he's like, over here? You want up there? No, over here. Over here. Peter, what do you want over here? No, 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 o over here. I want it right there. Where? Uh, over here. You want to put a hook right here? Yeah. All right. Right there? Yeah. Okay. They keep going? Like, <laughs> you want it over here now? You want it over here? I think I want it over there. Over here? On the right side. On this side. But he doesn't get mad. Yeah. Like, it's funny because there's a, all this shit in this movie that tips him over the edge. 
But that does it. Yeah. He's just okay with it. The use of the band at first is funny because they're so irritating where it gets funny, but then it keeps going and it goes past funny and just becomes fucking irritating. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which is probably what they were going for with the viewer, right? Yeah, it's, yeah you're like, oh, oh, stop already. Move on to another song at least. They're just bombarding you with this fucking band and that fucking singer guy too. Like, I just want to strangle him. And again, that singer guy is part of the comedy. Like, mm. when Reno has to paint a portrait of the singer, it's hilarious because the singer is going all these weird things. You have to feel me. You have to feel the colors. <laughs> what is it of me that you were putting on up here? To boot, he fucking hates this guy. Yeah. Dude, so he has to put up with this <laughs> shit. Yeah, to make a to make a buck. Yeah. <laughs> And then w when he's in the apartment, when he's painting him, this fucking guy can't sit still. He's all he's playing guitar. guitar. <laughs> he's like walking around singing that fucking song. It's like, just sit down and shut up. You're just as irritated with this fucking band as Reno is, and you feel it. And like, I just shut up. <laughs> yeah. Shut up. You know? <laughs> like that bum, there's that other sort of funny scene of that bum who's like living in the basement of that yeah. complex. Yeah, he's on he's, all, he's all like a gorilla in a cage. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, ooh, he's going all nuts. Shut the fuck up! <laughs> yeah. Besides all that shit with the band, the music for this movie is actually pretty damn good. Take the music in the opening scene of oh, this yeah, movie. It's yeah. awesome. The whole opening shot is awesome. Yeah. The music in this movie is mostly like an electronic, early electronic score. And it's yeah. great because it's just all weird noises. And bling, 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 symbolizes his madness. It's playing with bling, 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 yeah. the, the music is insane. It just says Reno's starting to go insane. The settings in this movie are fantastic. Everything is fucking derelict reflects yeah. what he's feeling yeah <laughs> uh, even the church in the beginning it's like yeah it's a church but it's a shitty church it's this kind of derelict looking depressing church mm. the club they go to is like the seedy punk club like everything about this movie is seedy one thing that i noticed was that all everybody in this movie has no future nothing is bright yeah there's nothing on the other side for these people at all well they're not really aiming for anything they no just, they just have nothing they like, just exist and they're just there yeah just you know, like the girls that he lives with, like they're... They're just leeching. They're just leeching off them. They're not contributing. Same with the bums, right? Yeah. They're not contributing anything. Yeah, all the bums. The, 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 the only people really doing anything in this movie is the band. <laughs> yeah. The band's like ma making their record, their shitty record or whatever. But you know, that's not going anywhere either because <laughs> they're, they're shitty, you know? It's like, yeah. even though they're trying to do something, you know it's going nowhere. But they do have money, right? <laughs> yeah. Which Reno doesn't. Yeah. Which is hilarious because there's that parallel again. He hates this band so much and they're successful. They have money? Yeah. Nobody's got money. Yeah. And it's got to be these assholes that do have it. <laughs> yeah. It has to be them. The commentary on being an artist. The band are artists, mm -hmm. you know. They're there. They have their little following or whatnot. They have their little groupies that hang out. Yeah. And Reno sees that, right? He says, oh, people like the band. They, they have money for rent. But he, as an artist... He's failing, He's right? failing, right? And all it takes is that art guy, that guy who's going to buy the painting, come in and say, it's no good. Yeah. And as an artist, that you're living off your art, that's the worst thing. And you're fucked. That's yeah. rent. You're out on the street like the bums he's killing if no one buys his painting. So I love the, the, the parallel between him and the band and the commentary on living off art. I think with the bums, he's like... He's killing his future. That'll bring us to the kills for this movie, and they're actually pretty good. They're, they're pretty messy and gory. I mean, like, it's the drill. drill. <laughs> yeah. It's a pretty messy fucking weapon, and I like how, like, when he drills into people's chests and all that, 
the drill's getting all caught up on their clothing and stuff. Like yeah. it really well, would. Like it would, yeah. It wouldn't be all just clean in and out, right? He drills through the guy's head. Too. Yeah, that's a great scene where he drills like the cover of the movie. They got the yep. movie fucking band. Band, you know, drilling. It's a great scene. The effect is great, you know. Mm -hmm. The guy, it's a real guy. It's not a fake head or anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. And I love the drill through the little openings in the bus shelter. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's like this wide. We just have to get the drill through. <laughs> I like how the, he follows him down too yeah. through that Through the slit. opening, yeah. And the ending for this movie is great too because it's kind of ambiguous. It kind of ends with a cliffhanger. Mm -hmm. You're not quite sure what goes down. Yeah, yeah. It's left to make it up in your own mind, right? Yeah. Which is perfect. So if you want a, a very smart but also very seedy yeah. <laughs> and the sort of disgusting kind of movie. Something that you can relate to, though, about real life. A smart movie disguised as a sleazy, shitty movie. In 1979, when slashers haven't even really started yet, mm -hmm. it's already a breath of fresh air from something like Halloween. Yeah. You know, it's a completely different type of slasher than Halloween only a year later. Right, with you know? a pretty smart message behind it. A lot of people never put it in the same category as movies like Halloween or Friday the 13th because of probably the budget. Mm -hmm. But no, it's up there because it has a lot to say. That's right. And what it's saying still is true today. Exactly, yep. yep. We've still got the same problems. It seems like everything seem is getting worse. Yeah. Even. <laughs> I'm surprised there isn't a driller killer out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's another scary thing I forgot to mention is how easy it is for him just to go around. Yeah. Like it's, it's scary how easy it is. Anyone could pick up a fucking drill and just go downtown at night Mm -hmm. And start drilling start, people. Start drilling bombs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so on that note, not that we're encouraging it. <laughs> uh, keep drinking and drilling <laughs> your ass.